you got to cut all the parts where I'm wrong. <laughs> Remember I said Jennifer Aniston was in Troll? <laughs> Wasn't her. You got to cut that, man. I look like a fucking moron. <laughs> Monsters and Mazes is a 1982 American made-for-television drama film directed by Stephen Hillard Stern, starring Tom Hanks and some other people. Welcome back to the Cult of Films. I'm John, the host, and once again, back with Mr. Jason Alt. We're going to go delve through a dungeon tonight. Man, we did it. We're talking about a movie that I'm going to refer to as Monsters and Mazes more than once on this episode. Because that sounds better, but it's it's actually mazes and monsters and not monsters <sighs> and mazes. Because Dungeons is before right, dragons. Right. There's there's a lot of things about this movie that are, are not what they should be or what, what it seems to be. I am so surprised that you even brought this one up. I haven't thought about this movie since probably 1991, circa around that time. JJ, what am I doing here? Not a movie a lot of people seek out. In the 1980s, uh, a guy named James Egbert uh, was at my alma mater, Michigan There's State the University. And he went into the physical plant's mm -hmm. steam tunnels um, to commit suicide. But for some reason, the story started that he was in there playing D&D &D and got lost or something. This weird sensational story came out. So there was a lot of hysteria around... It was the heyday of the, the televangelist. Satanic panic. At the church of a preacher named Roy Masters. Come out. No. No. I won't let her go. No. Exorcisms of the devil appear just as you sincere, far and out, and dramatic. Lust to power. You get out of here. So everybody said, oh, they're playing these satanic games. You know, your children are summoning the devil. And uh, Dungeons and Dragons is bad. Look, this kid thought he was a, in a real dungeon because the game warped his mind and he thought he was in a real dungeon and he went into the steam tunnels and died. And when in reality, it, a simple investigation by a, a, a PI the family hired later turned up as like, oh yeah, he just, he he did not die accidentally because he thought he was playing d and I don't know where that came from, but it was just this weird urban legend and it took a couple of years to set the story straight but by that time it was a it was a huge national deal about how dungeons and dragons made a made someone lose their mind and he thought he was fighting the tarasque <laughs> it was because it was easier to blame triple d back then you know dope dungeons and dragons rather than doing you know 10 seconds of of actual investigative work realizing that he was schizophrenic mm. realizing that he was uh, closeted and he wouldn't he didn't want to tell his his parents because they would have freaked out so you know everyone is always mm. looking for a reason to push the push the blame and like you said this was around the time when TV evangelists were, were having a heyday with this thing this was the new uh, reefer madness uh, at the time so everyone was freaking mm, yeah. out it came out later much later that you know, all of this was was unfounded and not the case. But you know, th this wasn't the only one of these back then. The other one that was a little bit lighter, but also equally as misinformed was Skull Duggery. Also had Wendy Crewson, uh, who was in both of these films. So and this bled into the the early uh, '90s as well. You know, Oprah got a hold of this. It even bled into our our favorite game, mm -hmm. uh, Magic: The Gathering. I remember them taking off the the pentagram in the background for the unholy strength and, and uh, the mm -hmm. Seven Hundred Club showed specifically the um the alpha art on a card called unholy strength yeah like oh that he's <laughs> getting his strength from the devil just like my son <laughs> my son started playing magic the gathering and now he doesn't talk to me i'm like i'm sure that's not why but <laughs> he just learned how to his body learned how to get a boner and he just wants to be in his room is is the real reason again uh i guess not as not, mm -hmm. <laughs> not as acceptable to to you know uh christian parents back in the day but you know so why are we talking about this movie <laughs> Remember me. It's not a 
movie like I necessarily am precious about. I th- I actually think it's it's quite problematic, but there are some some glimmers mm. of fantastically bad things and strangely enough mostly from a a young 26 year old sheriff woody tom hanks is this was his first major role this is right after bosom buddies got canceled there was like a month or they they made this so quick they they must have turned this movie around in a matter of months to get it out in the gap between like you know, bosom buddies ending and and this movie spinning up production and just record time. They they <laughs> farted out this movie, and I'm not precious about it either. This movie sucks hard, but when you try to make a cult movie, it doesn't work, right? Look at Snakes on a Plane. So this movie takes itself very seriously, and it sucks, and that's why it's so funny. <laughs> And the studio didn't want anybody to know they made this movie until Tom right. Hanks got very popular when he had that stretch where he did like Philadelphia and then Forrest Gump and then like, big Apollo in there. 13. Yeah. Like in the 90s, Tom Hanks got so big, they're just like, screw it. And they threw this out on VHS. And then people started to find this movie in the early 90s. And that's when it took on the cult status. It wasn't until this got re-released because... Nobody had this. It was a TV movie that no one had heard about. But when Tom Hanks got big, you know, it's kind of like when uh, Jennifer Aniston got big. They're like, yeah. oh, the movie Troll <laughs> released on DVD just just for the Jennifer Aniston fans. And then throw in some Troll 2 and you got to Troll stew, and Leprechaun. She also had a type. No, you're right. It was Julia Louis-Dreyfus that was in <sighs> Troll 1. See? <laughs> I need to be fact checked on this. We kind of already went through it. It's this group of kids, right? They're all in college. This one uh, teenager. Uh, they all look like they're, these are thirty year old teenagers. Uh, you know, Tom Hanks was actually twenty six, and he probably looked the youngest. So all of these people were probably flirting with their thirties. They were people in their twenties playing college students, and I, I don't know if you know this, but sometimes college students are in their twenties. <laughs> Technically, college students can be any age. Lots of people go to school for seven years. <laughs> Yeah, they're called doctors, Tom Hanks. <laughs> Robbie Wheeling is is our main character, kind of. And that's that's another grimy part about this. You see the, the I guess, movie poster or the, the promotional poster for this because it was a TV film. It had, like, all four of these kids on there because it was – this is definitely an ensemble cast. Mm-hmm. But, like, later on when Tom Hanks, like, broke out, it's just a picture of him and it just says Tom Hanks. And he has this, like – Hank's smirk on his face and and they really try to sell it as something it it wasn't whatsoever gets to school and he he meets these people so let's run down the the cast a little bit oh we already mentioned wendy crusen plays the the female lead opposite tom hanks hello you recognize wendy crusen as somebody who still acts in people's moms not billy zapka because that's all I saw. Maybe it's just because I, I like binge watched Cobra Kai, but the whole time I'm like, that's not Billy Zapka. And if you don't recognize David Wasaki, your mother probably <laughs> does because he is a fiend oh. for daytime soap operas. He had a six year run on General Hospital. He did a multiple episodes of Days of Our Lives. He was on Young and the Restless. Like, this guy loves doing that kind of junk. Um, he was on ER. If you're like, oh, where do I know this guy from? Probably for like General Hospital for like seven seasons. So he does kind of look like uh, yeah. William Zabka a little bit. And then finally, JJ was played by Chris Makepeace. We're all alone in the world. You know that, don't you? It's just you and me. Let's get talk. Who did kind of some horror stuff, I guess. Uh, it, he was Rudy and okay. Meatballs. I think that's yeah. where everybody knows I couldn't him place from. him. I didn't look, but I, I was trying, to, while I was watching, re-watching it for this, I was like, I know I've seen him somewhere, but then, like, once you watch his performance, it, kind of everyone's performance besides Tom Hanks in this, you're like, yeah, maybe I haven't seen him in anything else because I'm surprised that any of these people got work after this. The The performances were definitely... It was it was played like a, like a something they would show... In school, right? Like a deterrent. Like this is your your brain, your an brain on D and D, and there is like flubs 
in the movie that they're just like, fuck it, keep it. Just, they had no time. Just that the sucks. adaptation from Rona Jaffe, who wrote the novel from all the misinformation about the the kid from your alma mater. So it's just coming from the worst place, the most, you know. It was an irresponsibly written, poorly researched novel that they never really retracted. They were just sort of like, you know, a couple years later, a PI figured the whole thing out and everyone had moved yeah. on. For no reason at all. And that's this is kind of like some of the things that make it kind of good, bad, and just kind of funny. I mean, for the most part, it's pretty boring. There's a lot, like, they, you could feel them mm. stretching it like string cheese, trying to get it to that 90-minute runtime so they got the ad rev for CBS. Because, oh, my God, mm. it is yep, yep. it is so blatantly uh, full of, just packed full of asbestos. And you're just like, oh, God, like, just get through it. A, a good trick is to watch this in, in halftime on YouTube, just sped up. Because not only, blessedly, does it make the movie shorter and a little bit more compact, but all of Tom Hanks's like breakdowns are just the funniest thing you've ever seen. Yeah. Hey, I'm in New York. New York? Mommy, are you all right? What happened? Oh, no, I can't remember. Bobby, it's going to be all right. Where are you exactly? There's blood on my mind. Nice. What happened? And it's on my hands. I think I killed somebody. I know I killed somebody. Yeah, chipmunk Tom running around the World Trade Center. <laughs> Sounds awesome to me, frankly. So this was the, the work of Tom Lazarus, who hadn't done much writing before this. He'd done a little bit of TV, uh, TV movie writing and some episodes of, of TV up to this point. But like, you know, nothing major. And he hasn't, you know, done a ton you'd know since. But you would think that you would go into the, the guy's imdb and just find a, a ton of made for tv movies and stuff like that and it's it's really not the case most if you saw the movie stigmata he wrote that and then has not really done much in the 20 years since i like stigmata so he so he was probably a like a right weird bible thumper kind of guy then or or he needed sure. money because we live in a capitalist society and someone offered him money in exchange for writing a TV movie that he assumed nobody would see. I mean, that goes for like Stephen Hillard Stern too, the director. I mean, he he directed something mm. in 1981 with Bill Cosby as the devil. So, but I've never really heard of anything else that he's done either. So, the the, the high bar of um, of talent that was behind this project. I don't know. I, I wish I knew more about like how Tom Hanks got involved with this. I mean, he needed money because we live in a capitalist society. And his job on Bosom Buddies ended there weeks before production started. So I would assume that Tom Hanks did this movie uh, for money. I mean, and they got their money's worth, right? For however much he actually got paid for this. Because he, he he was, like I said, he is he's very good, bad in some scenes. But you got to think of the material to work with. But how will I know? Why are you so impatient? Because I love you and I want you to forgive me. Remember all that you see. I'm making a map. This group kind of meets up, and the main character, Robbie, uh, is now in this uh, this school, Get introduced to his parents, and the interaction, you know, there's something off. So they, they kind of play that part mm -hmm. up. There's this game that exists in this in this world called Mazes and Monsters, obviously a, a analog for, for Dungeons & Dragons. He sees on the lunchroom of this college that... There is some group looking, and then that's when Hats, uh, I'll just call him Hats because this guy, that's his shtick. And, and again, for a movie that's trying to take yeah. itself so goddamn seriously, this guy's in a fucking new hat in every other scene. <laughs> I counted. It's 14 hat changes. <laughs> and the first time he's, he's not wearing a hat is at the costume party. Hey, welcome to the party. <laughs> leader of this of this group that he's the dungeon master basically and he's trying to convince um robbie to to play mazes and monsters with them everything seems to go well except for no reason at all i well i guess what the reason is they had to have a pivot to to where the the material is dangerous the material of the game is dangerous because like 
right. seemingly for no reason at all, because these kids are just kind of like outcasts or whatever, and they're just like, oh, we're, we we found each other, and we're going to play this game together. Uh, Hats, or otherwise known as JJ, decides that he wants to be remembered, so he's going to go off himself in this cave, which he tells this to his bird that's poorly dubbed and that can't... Uh, they can only say that birds can't talk. Yeah, this movie was very preachy. It's funny the way <laughs> chick tracks yeah. are funny. Anytime somebody just is so divorced from your values in a very sincere way, yes, it can be very funny. And that's why this movie sucks on ice, <laughs> but it's very funny. One of the players Robbie played with got carried away and killed him. Well, that's kind of far out. Mazes and Monsters is a far out game. Because it thinks it's saving the youth of America from the scourge of what is basically <laughs> improv. <laughs> I know improv people don't want to hear that and D&D yeah. people don't want to hear that. But you're just yes right. ending with dice, man. <laughs> right. I'm sorry your favorite game <laughs> is whose line is it anyway? But if I just got a bunch of improv people to play D and D every week, it it would uh, it would be Harmon Quest and um, <laughs> stuff that's already yeah. happened a bunch of times. It's anyone who's good at improv is good at D and D demonstrably, and they don't know why, and that's why oh, it's Jesus. the same activity. So Hats goes to the cave. He then decides that the cave is so cool and such a cool setting that he's gonna hold off on ending his life. Because he's he's going to evolve the game into LARPing. I propose we play mazes and monsters in a real setting. Pequod Caverns. So he wants... <laughs> this is an indictment on LARPing as well. Oh no, your D&D playing son went yeah, outside. Exactly. <laughs> like you kept asking him to. That's what it was. It was all the parents whose kids play D&D. &D, they're like, go outside. I get some fresh air and then they started playing D, D with foam swords and they're like ah and this it. is after the real again kind of a almost like a lynchy and his mom is like redoing his room like reorganizing and, and redesigning his room and like he goes in and it looks like a like a grid paper it's just so bizarre like so some of the the dis, like because that looked like they had to do an entire room in this weird black and white you know like perforated line design that had to have been a, a good chunk of the budget because there was no budget of this movie anyway. So that was someone's job to do that weird bit in this satanic panic movie, I guess, to show that, you know, Hats doesn't want to be inside anymore. He wants to be away from his mom, so he has to kill himself or whatever. I don't know. So they go, they all, he convinces uh, the group to, to start a new game uh, by going to the this tunnels uh these, these caves that are infamous for uh, i guess like a, a another student wound up missing or something it all kind of bleeds together of like what what they thought happened to the the james dallas egbert guy and like because that was always confusing i'm like was that the per was the, the kid missing is they're saying it was james dallas egbert was it hats was it tom hanks it was just kind of everyone, you know, th this game just ruins all lives, apparently. He tries to make it fun by getting, you know, an immersive experience by getting the, the science lab skeleton right after he says, don't tell anybody that we're going there because, you know, it's a, it's a big to-do, walks right up to a science teacher and, and says, we need this to go play mazes and monsters <laughs> with, this, with this skeleton in these dangerous caves. And then Tom Hanks starts hallucinating. Uh, he thinks he sees a giant minotaur and that kind of breaks his mind mm -hmm. and, and that kind of sets it down uh, the road of, of madness, I guess. That's when he uh, tried to take down the two towers and they were finished <laughs> off later. <laughs> they got critted. I got to cut that. I don't know. Oh, Jesus. Al Qaeda rolls a natural 20. It's like, I'm going to take down one of the towers. Natural 20. Oh, shit. Uh, both <laughs> towers fall down. <laughs> He's like looking on a table. Oh, shit. You get a bonus tower. There's... Ripping out like 20 pages of, the, of his dungeon master guide. Kind of sets it up to where there's there's something up with, with Tom, right? 
Cause, cause he, he is the one that's mm-hmm. like begging them to be like, no, I don't want to play. I got to just focus. Like it's, it's, it's almost like this has happened before type thing, you know, off camera. Uh, but you know, he's the one that gives in and his first order of business after killing an imaginary minotaur is by the way, I don't think anything was more disrespectful for the to the game of Dungeons and Dragons than a level four cleric one v oneing a minotaur <laughs> without a mace, no mace with Jesus. no mace. Yeah, just right. As a D and D player, up until that point, right. I was like, "All right, this is basically a chick track come to life." But when you imply that a cleric <laughs> can solo Daggers a minotaur, it without a plus know. one mace, I'm I'm out. I'm out at that point. Yeah. Uh, but no, yeah, he has a uh, he and the the fighter girl, uh, Wendy Crewson's character, are dating. It kind of it's kind of muddy too. It's just like they're just hanging out together a lot, and then out of nowhere they're kind of living together. Mm-hmm. Um, but after that encounter, he has a vision from a monk in a tunnel, telling him that he needs to be celibate from now on because he's a holy man. So he breaks up with her. Uh, and doesn't take too long to for for her to to you know start shacking up with with not Willie uh, Billy Zapka because even though she's very hesitant because she she always liked him but she felt like he was too attractive but finally that barrier was breaking down so you know that that was happening mm-hmm. and then I you know Robbie disappears and no one could find Robbie and then it turns into a uh, Where's Rob? He kind of, not only disappears, but disappears from the film. That's why, like, Tom Hanks getting top billing or only billing on this is it's kind of selling something it's not. It's a made-for-TV movie. They didn't know Tom Hanks. And he was the biggest star in the movie, but mm. there were no stars in this movie. This is 1982 Hanks. This is before he made the movie The Man with One Red Shoe and then was on a rocket ship to superstardom. Joe versus the volcano, more realistic than <laughs> Robbie versus the Minotaur. I'm still and mad you about hate that. Joe versus the volcano. You would have a better chance of beating a volcano. I love that movie. When this movie really picks up, besides the the early comedy moments from from Hats, uh, is, is when Tom Hanks starts to really lose it because he finds himself in in like the the sewer and he meets the the king of the homeless. Yeah, look. Please, there's just no reason to fear me. I, I am part you. I am a holy man. I'm the king of France. Your Majesty. And the and the kids are trying to Scooby Doo that shit and try to put it together where he is, uh, and, and but they all they think that he's like really into Tolkien, but the reveal that they're talking about the Twin Towers, it was, I, I laughed out loud and kind of spit out my drink. I was just like, God, has there been more of a antiquated time capsule uh, of a movie than this? They're kind of accompanied by an accusing detective that knows that, the, that you know, this game is dangerous. Mazes and Monsters is a far-out game. I wonder if Rona Jaffe was involved and is like, ugh. Put a detective who's a yeah. dick and, and just says stuff like, that's not what really happened after you wrote <laughs> yeah. your book. Jaffe didn't write the screenplay, but she did get a writing credit because she wrote the novel from right. which it was adapted. Then you get a, you know, a, like a Kentucky Fried movie kind of chase uh, scene of, of the three other players trying to track down Robbie in like a 10 foot space. They're, they're going like up and down elevators in the Twin Towers and, the, and then going back to the lobby and stuff. And you could just have that overlay of like the chicken dance. Like in Scooby-Doo where they're walking <laughs> in a room on one side and coming yeah. out the other side of the hallway. It's like he's not in the filing cabinet. You can tell because I jumped in the top of the filing cabinet and then came out the bottom. Doinks. And then it just crescendos in, in probably the best performance from Tom Hanks ever, which I'll insert clip here. Game. Game. JJ, what am I doing here? Kate, why can't I remember? 
they convince him not to throw himself off the twin towers. A cleric like, would never do that's that's not yeah, even he's like, consistent. Yeah, like I could fly with a lawful yeah. good character. Oh, you can fly really? Clerics are doing that now. Oh, their plate armor is way too heavy to fly. Clerics can't wear yeah, full plate, can. you moron. They're like tanks. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I, oh, I was just trying to yes and. But I said no, but, and I was wrong. <laughs> there's a good mm -hmm. chance you haven't heard of this movie, right? And there's a good chance if you like cult movies and, you know, take our recommendation, you'd be like, oh, this is what I wanted. So if you want, if you want a good movie about playing D and D, this right. isn't it. They've never made one. Destiny. Come to me. Um, <laughs> but, but if you want a piece of shit that's very funny, um, in that it's so sincere, tackling a problem that they invented, that's that's very cool and very good and. This does a very good job of being not good. And if you're into cult movies, this that's the description of the kind of movie you want to see. Right? So um, this isn't Samurai Cop type of cult movie. This mm -hmm. is Reefer Madness. So if you think Reefer Madness is very funny, and it is, this is like a toned down made for TV version of Reefer Madness. So a lot of the times on, on this show, we don't ask ourselves, is this movie good? Is this movie bad? Mm -hmm. We say, who's this movie for? This movie is for just people who like cult movies. The more you like Dungeons and Dragons, the funnier this will be to you. But you, it's not a requirement because none of the depictions of Dungeons and Dragons are all that accurate. Right. So you're not going to be lost. Dungeons and Dragons is an improv exercise where you say what you're going to instead of just that's the scene. Uh, there's a guy with a screen who makes you roll dice. And you're like, I'm going to do this. He's like, are you sure, though? And then sometimes you roll some dice. You're like, no, I, I didn't, though. <laughs> and that's it. That's it's <laughs> there. You know how to play D&D. &D. It's improv where sometimes you don't get yes ended because you're bad at rolling <laughs> dice. And that's it. So you don't need to know D and D to find this movie very funny and terrible, in the way that we like our cult films to be. Yeah, and Billy Zapka definitely doesn't know how to play D and D because uh, Hats like jumped into the pit when he was trying to commit suicide during the game, so they could go LARP in in the caves. He didn't even give him a saving throw. He's just like, "Oh, you just jumped in. You're dead now." And just like, "Oh my God, no one knows what they're fucking doing in this." <laughs> There are no saving throws. Only Jesus Christ, our Lord, washing us clean in his blood can give us a saving throw. Mazes and Monsters is a far-out game. It's fun for people that like to see first, like, projects of famous, of, like, really, really famous people. It, it's so fun to see Tom Hanks in a piece of shit like this. I mean, a lot of people did made-for-TV stuff in the 80s. Right, so and, and they're always fun, like, to, to go back and yeah. check those out. Um, but th this is more of a... You could watch, like, a super cut of, of the funny chunks of this and probably save yourself, like, a good 45 minutes of your life. I don't... Th I wouldn't recommend... No, watch the whole thing. Get drunk. <laughs> watch this with yep. friends. This movie's too boring to riff tracks, which right. sucks. Because the dialogue is too safe mm -hmm. to be ridiculous. If the dialogue were dumber, if the parents were dumber. And by the way, the parents, the cast for this movie is pretty good. You know, and Francis and Murray yeah. Hamilton were in this movie. You know? Murray Hamilton playing a cop because they needed someone who could yeah. play a cop. Not a bad cast for a 1980s made for TV sure. movie. You know, Tom Hanks is the big get now, but at the time, they were taking a chance on a young upstart actor. A lot of people give the the cause there's like one like Minotaur that shows up a couple times, and people kind of laugh at that. But I didn't actually hate it. Like I thought it looked pretty good, and it was that's what a Minotaur. Yeah, looks it like. was in the dark too, so it's like they knew how much money they didn't have, and they shot it accordingly. <laughs> <laughs> so. I've seen worse for a, a lot bigger budget, so I was like, yeah, I, I didn't hate that. The, the creature effects, 
uh, you know, good good on you for that. But I'm gonna go one step farther, and I'm going to. We do hot takes on the show sometimes. I think the Minotaur in Mazes and Monsters look better than the Mechanical Shark in Jaws. <laughs> a movie that Murray Hamilton was in. No shit. Yeah. Connections are endless. Like a maze. I guess a maze has an end. Not the magic card endless maze. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> or a misty maze. I, I don't know. There's not too much else to say about mazes and monsters. I, it's just one of those that's just like, like you said, it, it's kind of too slow to riff tracks. It's too boring to really sit sit down yeah. with a party and be like, ha ha, it's, it's, it's not that. It's... It's very it's it's a movie that did a serious movie badly rather than a movie that did like an exciting yeah. movie badly because you need to get an exciting movie done badly, you know, you get you get something on MST3K <laughs> right? You get Final Sacrifice or something yeah. like that. So this isn't gonna be wall to wall a good time, but it's a cult movie for sure. a reason, and uh, we watch this every year in college <laughs> while playing D and D. Yeah, but we stayed out of the steam oh. because they still burn coal at Michigan State's physical plant in 2022. So how is he the only one that was hallucinating? <laughs> <laughs> how did everyone else turn out unscathed? The whole time I was there, I was just like, ah, I had a daze from coal dust. And then I graduated. I was like, that wasn't worth $30,000. <laughs> you guys got me again. <laughs> I don't even use the degree Jesus. now. I'm here <laughs> instead of in a laboratory. So maybe uh, the spell was broken as soon as I left the, the tunnels myself. Mazes and monsters is a far out game. Uh, Jason, when you're not rolling uh, nat 20s and taking down the Twin Towers, where can everyone find you? I'm on the bird site at Jason E. Alt. Check out my link tree. It's got links to all the projects I work on around the net. Nothing D&D based yet, but after tonight, after I talked about how important it is to me that <laughs> clerics 1v1 appropriately sized uh, enemies for their That's level, uh, maybe I will be on a D&D project someday. I got a real good idea tonight. What if funny people play D&D? <laughs> You could call it, cr I rolled a critical or something like that. <laughs> rolled critical. We'll workshop right, the yes, name. Yes. I feel like it's close to yeah, something. Maybe. Yeah, you can find me on Twitter at John the Host. You could also follow this very show at The Cult of Films. Uh, you could also follow this in podcast forums on all your favorite podcasting sites. We'll see you next time.